What's up guys? Welcome to the channel Rockin' the Country. I'm Don. I'm pumped for today's video. This is just a special thing that I came up with a while ago. A couple things. One is I'm pumped and partly why I'm wearing my Rutgers attire. I'm a Rutgers crackhead anyway because I graduated from there. My older sister did. And tonight, as of the time of this recording, Rutgers is playing Clemson in our opening game in the NCAA March Madness Tournament. So those of you who are into college sports, Finally, after 30 years, we're back in the tournament. But we play Clemson, and I have a very special fondness for Clemson because I've got like two surrogate daughters, but I've got like another half surrogate daughter. Her name is Caroline. I'm very close with her parents and her other sister, and they live in South Carolina, and they went to Clemson. And Caroline lives up here in Brooklyn. So, Caroline, shout out to you, my dear. Rebecca, shout out to you. Brett, Amanda. But we play the Tigers tonight, but I have a special place in my heart just because of this beautiful family that I've been close with for a long time. But anyway, this special reaction I'm doing, I decided, I don't know, about six months ago, I want to do a reaction or just, you know, it's not a reaction. I just want to do a video on albums on, uh, for which I liked every song on it. And that's very hard to pull off. It's very rare when an album, every single song on it, appeals to me. Same thing's true of you. We all have our own likes, dislikes, idiosyncrasies, whatever. But normally there's a song on an album that just is either terrible or boring or doesn't seem to fit or whatever. Now, the first two, it's not really fair because they're greatest hits album. So naturally, they're already pre-selected. But these were my foray into country music. Those of you who know, I started with rock, then I got into Nashville country, then you guys started reacting to, uh, asking me to react to traditional country after I started the channel. And I just got hooked on traditional, more traditional type stuff because of the lyrics, the way the songs, you know, uh, instrumentation buoys up the lyrics, the whole thing, just traditional. There's nothing like it. And then when you put headphones on, and you just sit with the purpose of making comments, which takes you to a whole different space of intensity with the song and a relationship that you form with that song and the experience, it's second and none. In any case, Alan Jackson's Greatest Hits album is the first one I'll say. I like every song. And I have to say, even on Greatest Hits album, just because something was a hit doesn't mean that I like it. Uh, or you. I mean, that's just the way it works. I mean, just because, you know, two million other people loved it and bought it and all that doesn't mean it works for me. But I'm going to read the uh, the songs on it. Or chat a, this might like spur your memory because you can hear the melody in your head. Those of you who know Alan Jackson's music, which is just about everybody on this channel, Chattahoochee, and I've reacted or reviewed a bunch of these songs, but Chattahoochee, Gone Country, She's Got the Rhythm, and I got the blues. Midnight in Montgomery. We all know that one. Tall, tall trees. Chasing that neon rainbow. I'll try. Don't rock the jukebox. Living on love. Summertime blues. Love's got a hold on you. Who says you can't have it all? I reacted to that one. Reviewed it. Home. Wanted. I don't even know your name. That's a funny one. Dallas. Here in the real, real world, someday, Mercury Blues, and I'd Love You All Over Again. Those are the songs on that album. I don't know. Alan Jackson is a special talent. He's a special personality. He's a funny dude. He's a talented dude. He doesn't try to prove himself. He doesn't have to, but I, he, I don't think he's ever tried to be anything but what he is. And what he is was way more than enough to, you know, just make him iconic and then the, the the other album that i bought at the same time when i was making my foray into country music 20 years ago whatever was merle haggard's greatest hits so what a way to start kind of like a uh, alan jackson and merle haggard merle old school outlaw and alan sort of bridges you know traditional with contemporary national country and he does it very very well in my opinion of course the songs on merle's greatest hits album was The Bottle Let Me Down, Branded Man, which hits me in my heart every time, Working Man's Blues, Working Man Blues, I'm a Lonesome Fugitive, Hungry Eyes, Okie from Muskogee, iconic as it gets with that song, 
Daddy Frank, the Guitar Man. I re reviewed that one. Big City and Going Where the Lonely Go. That's where I got my start. And now the next one is one of my favorite artists, period, is Miranda Lambert. And it, there's something so good about Miranda, so in tune, so unapologetic, so artful, so the lyrics in her song just hit me deep. But the way she sings them, she's got like this, I don't know if you call it vibrato or just little inflection in there or something that just makes these songs go deep. But her album, Kerosene, I like every single song on that. And um, the, the names of the songs on that are Kerosene, Greyhound Bound for Nowhere, I Can't Be Bothered, Me and Charlie Talking, that one always hits me deep, Love is Looking for You, that always hits me deep, There's a Wall, always hits me deep, What About Georgia, New Strings, Bring Me Down, I Want to Die, Mama, I'm All Right, and Love Your Memory. I might re-review Love Your Memory, because that is one of the deepest, most poignant songs I've ever heard in my life. I reacted, reviewed it a while, two years ago, but maybe three. So now it gets interesting, because now I'm going sort of off script here, and the name of the channel, Rock into Country, like I went from rock into country. That was how I got in to country. So. Some of the other albums that I like are, every song on it are rock albums, but I guarantee it, some of these albums, well, all these albums you've heard of, but you might even like them just as much as I do. But Steely Dan's album, Asia, and the songs on that, there aren't many, I think there are only seven. Black Cow, Deacon Blues, Home at Last, Josie, Asia, Peg, I Got the News. That album is just one of the best albums ever produced. Even to this day, the quality on that album, the musicians, but just the way it was engineered, just stands up, stands the test of time, you know? And then the other one, another one is U2's album, Joshua Tree. These songs all have an emotional component. The way they're delivered, the way they're sung, but certainly the way they're received by me. The songs on that, that album are Where the Streets Have No Name, with or without you, running to stand still, that one always goes deep with me. I just stop what I'm doing and just listen, unless I'm driving, then I keep going. In God's Country, One Tree Hill, Mothers of the Disappeared, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For, Bullet the Blue Sky, Red Hill Mining Town, Trip Through Your Wires, and Exit. And I love that one. And now this, the next album, Leonard Skinner's Gimme Back My Bullets. And when I was a teenager, this came out. And that was just a badass fire on all cylinders album. And I've probably reacted to one or two of these songs. If not, uh, I know Every Mother's Son is going to be on this album, the name of the song. But the songs on that album are Gimme Back My Bullets, Trust, Double Trouble, which I can relate to, Every Mother's Son, I Got the Same Old Blues, and Roll Gypsy Roll. Love that album, love Skinner. Most of you guys love Skinner as well. And then Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. And here's the beauty of the timing of this. I don't plan it this way, but I've wanted to do a reaction to Wish You Were Here for my Country Heart series. And I'm going to be doing that in a week or two. And it's a, an acoustic version by David Gilmour doing Wish You Were Here. And uh, man, am I looking forward to doing that because. When I put headphones on, it takes me to a different space. So even though I'm doing reactions to songs that I've heard, or reviews of songs I've heard, I've not heard them like I do with the headphones on. Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here album is Shine On You Crazy Diamond, parts one to five. Welcome to the Machine, it's about the music industry. Have a Cigar, about the music industry. Wish You Were Here, about Sid Barrett, I'm pretty sure. Shine On You Crazy Diamond, part six to nine. And that whole album just transfixes, transports, takes me elsewhere. And then another Pink Floyd album, Animals. This is just another brilliant British reflection on society, on culture, on the world. It was based on George Orwell's, Orwell's Animal Farm about how politicians, 
business people and the regular, quote unquote, regular people, the proletariat, the working, you know, the working class uh, interact with one another and the way it works. But pigs on the wing part one, dogs, pigs, three different ones, sheep, pigs on the wing part two. Those are the songs on that album. And then the other album on whose uh, every album for which I liked every song, I won't read the titles, but it's Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti. That just amps me up. I go to a whole nother space when I hear that too. Every single song on that album just hits. And now these are honorable mention albums because there's one song on each of them, but one of them has two that I don't care for that much. I can tolerate them, but I find myself skipping to the next song. And that's my sole criterion, really as to whether or not I like every song on an album. If I'm listening to it and I don't want to fast forward or, or jump to the next song, I like every song on it. But Fleetwood Mac's album, Rumors, and I love that album. But there's one song, two songs that never did it for me. Gold Dust Woman, I'll probably get some crap for that, but so be it, and Silver Springs. Neither of those songs move me in any deep way. Maybe that'll change in 10 years, maybe not. But the other songs on it are just phenomenal. And then the Grateful Dead's album, Go to Heaven. I love that album, uh, except one song that never worked for me, Lost Sailor. Just never did it. So Deadhead's out there, fire away, but I'm sure there are some dead songs that you're not crazy about too, even Deadhead's. And then the final honorable mention is the Allman Brothers album, Brothers and Sisters. It came this close to being an album that was going to go into my albums for on um, which every song I liked. But I'm not crazy about Pony Boy. I was never crazy about it. I know the song. I've heard it. I'll listen to it. But it just never completely did it for me. So I had to put it in the honorable mention category. So that was just for fun. I'm curious to know maybe what you guys are thinking about your favorite albums. If you've ever given thought to an album for which you like every single song, like it moves you, you feel it, what you relate to it, whatever. But every single one is like a top notch song that uh, just moves you in some way, even if it's just a jam, you know, so. That's it, guys. Off the beaten track. That's what, It'll go on that playlist now that I think of it. It'll go on the off the beaten track playlist. And hopefully by the time you guys see this, Rutgers will have won a couple games in the tournament. <laughs> go are you. I might even post this on the Rutgers board just so they could see it. Anyway, that's it, guys. Have a great day. See you on another video. Keep rocking the country. Keep rocking the music.